Hey guys, it's great to be together with you for devotions today. And uh, we're gonna continue kind of off our weekend message and kind of looking at this on purpose idea. In fact, Doug leaned into four key ideas that is really kind of the motivator for work for so many. And I realize these are four generalities that are gonna be brush strokes to cover majority of people, but I'm sure there's others that could be included and I'm not trying to answer all that. I'm just gonna say this, that Many people go to work for no other reason than because of paying the bills. Um, just the grind of constantly staying up on it and, and those kind of things. And can we just say that that's not a horrible thing. Uh, matter of fact, I, I'm grateful to hear people are paying their bills. And I, I know we go to work and it, there's a cost. I, I mean, I look back in seasons of our lives. I remember multiple times with Becky when we get to the end of the month and paid off all our bills, we would high five each other. We did it. I remember moving to a new house and, and really stretching us and somehow we did it and that felt great. So we realized that's a motivator for a lot of people. But then we talked secondly kind of about that part is not only just paying bills, but being able to put a little bit away for retirement. And uh, to be honest, that seems like a wise decision to make. Uh, and matter of fact, Becky and I were really late in kind of starting our planning for retirement. And, and so honestly, that one sits in my mind. I know a lot of people work for success and it's not just enough to prepare for the retirement, but they really want to prepare to really live their greatest life. They want to enjoy nice things now and all of that. And, and can I be honest, even as we say this, I mean, somebody that works hard, that's not a knock. I, I love the fact that people go to work because they want to take care of families and they want to position themselves to be set later on in life and, and want to enjoy, not just squeak by, but succeed in a level. I mean, all of that sounds good. But let's just ask the question, could there be more? And what if there could be a lot more? Like, what if that wasn't the deep end of the pool? What if that was the shallow end? And then we talked about what if we live to fulfill God's will or purpose? And I think this is a whole new level. See, I, I think one is that you enjoy the water and you get to play, but when you get in the deep end, all of a sudden some new opportunities. That's where the high dive and the diving board and the slide and, and all the other things get to come into life, it, which makes the pool so much more fun. Now, don't get me wrong. There's nothing like cooling off in the water and that's great, but, but man, jumping in the deep end, that's where it gets great. And, and today I want to look at a verse that I think is that. It's found in Luke chapter 9, verse 23. If you're doing your soap, you can write that down. I'm going to be reading it out of the NLT today, New Living Translation. It reads this way. Then he said to the crowd, he being Christ, if any of you want to be my followers, you must give up your own way, take up your cross daily and follow me. Wow. Wow. If you want to be a follower, you're going to give up your, your own way. I don't know about you, but I love my way. I mean, I love uh, kind of the directions I go with. I love my plans. I love my, my kind of habits. I love the consistency. Uh, I, I love the eggs my way. I love um, toast done the way I like it done. I, like, I, I mean, you think about it. I, I, love, I, I love my way. But being a, a follower of Christ is giving that up and picking the way, the way of Christ, which is following him. Well, please understand that giving up your way and following Jesus, many of us will say, well, well, how are those different? Because our way and God's way, those are, those are different ways. But when all of a sudden we begin to make God's way our way, wow, that changes something then we realize that not only are we able to walk through life that takes care of bills and walks through a life that's just good stewarded towards taking care of a future and being successful, what we realize when we begin to follow God's way is that all of a sudden his peace, his protection, his provision is available in ways that we, we never thought. Let me answer the question, does all of a sudden, does it mean when we follow Jesus that all of our bills are taken care of? No, of course not. Does it mean that there's a guarantee of what the future holds in this earth? Nope. Is there a guarantee that we're going to be successful and enjoy uh, levels of success or achievements or, or that? Nope. But there is a peace that surpasses understanding. There is a hope that we realize that this, this life right here is not the destination. That there is a heaven and there is a reward in heaven 
that outlasts any retirement here on this planet. See, our way, our way typically makes us the center focus of all attention. It's meant to design to create and make us comfortable. It's designed to make us enjoy this. When we follow God's way, it's to make his name great. It's to enlarge his kingdom, to expand his reach, these kind of things. And in it, I think in it we find contentment. In it, we find completeness. In it, we find out that life is able to bring a level of fulfillment that nothing else will. And why do I know this? Because I, like you, have tried to fulfill it in all these other things. And it's never happened. It's amazing that a new car is only fun for a small season. New outfit, nice meal, whatever it is, at some point it wears off and does not fulfill. But a life that's followed in Christ that, that, that brings fulfillment. So today, if you're taking your soap, I want you to write down your scripture. I want you to make a couple observations that to follow Christ, it requires following him, not our own way. Um, some other ob observations, we can just simply write them out. Nextly, we would out write an application. Today, I choose to put my way, my desires, my will aside to follow yours. And then from it, that you begin to write a prayer. Dear Lord, today, help me to follow you to put my desires secondary in your will priority. And when I do that, can I experience the peace, the provision, and the favor that comes from being obedient? I believe the Lord will meet you right where you're at. Hey, can I pray for you real quick? Dear Lord, I thank you for friends and family, those that are watching right now. I pray right now we'd realize that the greatest life ever is a life that's surrendered to you. And so Lord, today, I pray that we would be known as followers of Christ not people that live our lives that just add a little bit of Jesus on a weekend or here or there. No, we fully surrender our lives to you. And then you take care of the rest. Lord, what is success? Success is a life completely trusted in you. Wow. That is the greatest retirement. That is the greatest setup for the tomorrow and beyond ever. Because Lord, we can trust you. You are so good. We give you all glory and praise in your name. Amen. Hey, guys, it's a joy to be able to have this time with you. Um, I look forward to seeing you on campus or online um, Sunday mornings, 9 and 1045. We'd love to have you there. That's Alamo Campus, Dublin at just 9 o'clock. God bless you guys. You have a great day. We'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.